hello guys good morning everyone i welcome you all to my youtube channel em study prep and today we will be discussing about paraquet poison i am dr bhuneshwar doing my emergency medicine second year residency so let's get into the topic uh, for paraquet poison when we look at to it why is this uh, i hope that every one of you might have encountered patients consuming fatal amount of paraquet poison and then getting admitted and then getting declared uh, within one week so why is this paraquet poison very much toxic and very much lethal having very high case fatality rate is because of its inherent toxicity and due to the lack of any effective treatment that is available for this poison so we had a case in a hospital like a 15 year old boy consumed around 100 ml of herbicide because as his father scolded him for not getting good grades and immediately he was taken to the nearby hospital had a gastric lavage done and then came to a hospital after 4 hours of consumption when on arrival his vitals were stable he was slightly tachypneic and uh, he had a complaints of abdominal pain and he had multiple episodes of vomiting and uh, he had, he did not have any desaturations and he did not have any spikes of fever he did not have any hemoptysis or any bleeding manifestations on day 1 of consumption his uh, investigations uh, came out to be normal came out to be normal and we had taken him for one cycle of plasma first and two cycles of charcoal hemoperfusion hemodialysis in subsequent days and was treated with all the supportive treatment the cyclophosphamide glutathione analgesics antibiotics and methylprednisolone available but by day 4 the patient started desaturating had he uh, tachypnea tachycardia and he also started having mucosal ulcers with bleed and his lft and rft were deranged and by day 6 he was declared dead we could not revive the patient so why is this uh, paraquet poison is very much toxic and having a very high case fatality rate as i said because of its inherent toxicity and uh, because of its toxic molecular mechanisms involved and also lack of any antidote available for this poison usually we have uh, for many poisons we uh, there are many available antidotes but uh, there are certain poisons where there are no antidotes available like the paraquet and this is the mo- uh, second most common cause of death in asian countries the second most common cause of death in asian countries the first uh, common cause of uh, death due to poison consumption in asian countries is due to op poisoning and when we see the lethal dose an average 16 60 kg man only a 10 ml in average is enough to cause death in a patient so uh, let's see the toxicokinetics so why is this toxicokinetics very much important in um, looking onto the paraquet poisonous because based on this toxicokinetics and also based on the molecular mechanism there are many many research going on to how to treat the paraquet poison so let's look into toxicokinetics is mainly described like a two compartment model so what is the two compartment it is mainly concentrated in plasma and also it is concentrated on the kidney because within 1 to 2 hours of consumption the paraquet concentration peaks in plasma levels and also uh, within 12 to 24 hours after ingestion paraquet is rapidly excreted unchanged in urine so this within 1 to 2 hours if we are able to uh, decontaminate the patient from the first compartment that is from plasma then there are chances to get a uh, there are chances for recovery there are a few a very less percentage of chances to get the patient getting recovered so and within 12 to 24 it is uh, rapidly excreted unchanged in urine so more and more amount of paraquet is getting cons- uh, filtrated by the uh, kidney and more and more amount of uh, uh, paraquet is getting excreted in urine so this can be a basis for hemo and as an hemo hemo perfusion and within plasma uh, levels uh, peak in 1 to 2 hours so uh, based on its molecular uh, weight and uh, lipophilic uh, properties uh, there are research going on like uh, patient can be taken up for plasma pheresis and there are many research suggesting that plasma pheresis has helped one cycle of plasma therapy the plasma exchange has helped some patients to get recovered so the initial elimination half life is around 6 hours and during which the paraquet is rapidly absorbed into the tissues and because of its rapid absorption into the tissues and it also has high volume of uh, distribution so uh, when it gets rapidly absorbed into the tissues it started starts producing its uh, toxic uh, inflammatory cytokines responsible for the multi organ dysfunction so 
and also when uh, people have proposed that it is a two uh, compartment model of uh, toxokinetics that is mainly constant in plasma and kidney but lungs can be uh, lungs can be suggested as a uh, third compartment because it is slowly but rapidly uh, uh, taken up by the type 2 pneumocytes of the lungs so this is responsible for uh, gradually developing pulmonary fibrosis and when we look into the molecular mechanisms there are three main uh, molecular mechanisms mainly causing the mitochondrial damage through the lipid peroxidation so when uh, in the mitochondria for example if we look into the type 2 pneumocyte of a lung cell uh, there are many many molecular mechanisms going on in a pneumocyte so when we see uh, in presence of oxygen paraquat gets oxidized into the uh, superoxide anion and if there is superoxide dimutase available it gets oxidized to H2O2 and uh, hydrogen peroxide and in presence of catalase enzyme the um, hydrogen peroxide is getting oxidized to water and also in presence of glutathione this hydrogen peroxide is getting into the water so thereby reducing the free radicals in presence of superoxide dimutase catalase and glutathione and uh, when the paraquat enters the uh, mitochondria more and more amount of NADPH and oxygen is getting in presence of oxygen more and more uh, NADPH is getting utilized so there is depletion of NADPH and also there is depletion of uh, glutathione so that no glutathione or no NADPH is available to reduce this uh, superoxide anion therefore in presence of nitric uh, nitrite and also in presence of iron all these superoxide anions starts uh, producing this peroxyl nitrate and superoxide uh, um, anion getting hydroxyl uh, free radical and peroxy nitrate free radicals are produced these free radicals if they are not reduced into the water by superoxide dimutase and glutathione uh, they starts uh, activating the nuclear factor kappa beta that in turn stimulates it gets attached into the it gets into the nucleus and gets attached to the dna starts producing the transcription of pro inflammatory cytokines like uh, inf uh, tnf alpha il6 il2 and il1 beta so this is a uh, graph showing that how much amount of uh, reactive oxygen species that is free radicals are produced in presence of paraquat like in uh, paraquat there are more amount more and more amount of um, reactive oxygen species is produced like uh, these are responsible for producing pro-inflammatory cytokines more and more amount of cytokines and uh, inflammatory mediators are produced that are responsible for multi-organ dysfunction so when we look into the clinical features uh, there are uh, mild it is divided into mild moderate and severe the mild is uh, described as when uh, we consume paraquat when the patient uh, consumes paraquat less than 20 mg per kg or less than 7.5 ml usually this is non-lethal dose and complete recovery is expected in these patients because they're mostly asymptomatic and renal or hepatic injury is minimal and uh, decreased only pulmonary diffusion capacity is reduced but uh, complete recovery is possible in uh, mild consumption uh, but in moderate severity uh, recovery can be tried but patient will present with uh, GI symptoms like mouth ulcers and uh, renal and hepatic failure and also uh, they are prone for uh, hypotension due to cardiogenic, uh, cardiogenic shock and uh, within one to two weeks they progress to pulmonary fibrosis and thereby they end up in hypoxia and death can be occurred so uh, moderate is uh, described when the patient has consumed more than 20 to 40 mg per kg and more than 7.5 to 15 ml of paraquat severe cases mostly uh, there is uh, no chance of recovery and mostly we concentrate on palliative treatment and we explain the patient attenders mostly that the chance of survival is uh, very much less and uh, if patient attenders are willing and uh, if they understand some people may uh, say just to give a palliative care or if uh, there are many people in our community asking for just try something we know the consequences but just try so uh, we try with the cycle of uh, extracorporeal elimination techniques in uh, in the pressure in the compulsion of the patient's attenders so severity is a, a severe paraquat poison is defined when the patient consumes more than 40 to 50 mg per kg or more than 15 to 20 ml rapid development of hepatic renal failure within 24 hours and uh, gi ulcerations esophagus corrosive uh, injuries and uh, toxic myocarditis and uh, refractory hypotension that is not uh, 
uh, that doesn't correct with any of the vasopressor inotropes and uh, finally the patient ends up in coma convulsions and death from cardiogenic shock and multi organ dysfunctions in within one to five days and uh, these are the some of the pictures showing the mucosal ulcers the tongue uh, uh, the picture above the tongue is uh, the above picture showing the uh, whitish color plaque on the tongue is usually within 24 hours and this is a late progression within one week uh, with mucosal ulcers and uh, this is uh, esophagus corrosive ulceration and this is a pulmonary fibrosis that progresses in one to two weeks of consumption and uh, next if we see the pathological person major target organs mainly in renal uh, where it is a uh, concentrated and where it is more and more amount of paraquet gets concentrated in the kidney to get excreted when more and more amount of paraquet is getting concentrated in the renal uh, tubules mainly in the proximal convoluted tubule it causes acute tubular necrosis and rapidly going into the uh, gradually going into the renal failure and in liver when we see it causes necrosis and hepatic failure in heart it causes congestive heart failure in lungs there is two stages in acute alveolitis stage there is um, the mitochondria uh, damage and lysosomes swell and there is vacuolation and also uh, finally there is necrosis and apoptosis of the uh, alveolar alveoli and there is a sloughing of alveoli causing pulmonary edema and in a second phase there is a destructive phase where uh, collagen formation occurs and uh, there occurs the pulmonary fibrosis and uh, diagnosis why we require all these uh, lab tests is because diagnosis is clearly established when the patient says that i have consumed or the patient attenders have seen the patient consuming the paraquid why are these tests important just to monitor the prognosis of the patient and uh, explain the patient attenders and uh, about how we can how, uh, how much is the recovery possible so the bedside very cheap test available is the urine diethionate test so when we look at the urine diethionate test just catheterize the bladder with Foley's catheter and uh, obtain 10 ml of urine and uh, just put uh, sodium uh, diethionate or sodium bicarbonate and you will see the color change uh, and uh, if the patient's uh, urine color after putting the urine diet uh, sodium diethionate is very bluish black in color then it is a very bad prognostic marker uh, that suggests that uh, he has consumed more than uh, uh, lethal uh, that he has consumed the lethal dose of paraquet uh, if it is uh, bluish black in color then we say that the urine uh, paraquet concentration is more than 1 mg and this is a poor prognostic uh, marker and uh, we after once we start the uh, extracorporeal elimination techniques we do uh, repeat the urine diethionate test every two to four hours till we get a negative test uh, of uh, two to three cycles but uh, rarely we get any negative urine diethionate test after uh, depending upon the amount of consumption of the paraquet poison and if um, the patient's um, urine uh, test comes uh, less than 1 mg then it uh, complete recovery or survival is possible at the time of presentation and there are many calorie metric tests uh, that is available uh, calorie metric is uh, based on the gold nanoparticles wherein when paraquet combines with the gold nanoparticles it forms the bluish gray color and it can be detected by naked eye or visual spectroscopy and why is radiographs important because of the uh, more and more amount of paraquet consumed because of the esophageal corrosion and uh, they may end up in pneumomediastinum or pneumothorax or lung fibrosis at the time of presentation is a bad prognostic factor and we can also obtain the blood pa uh, plasma paraquet levels and um, if it is more than 2 mg per liter at the time of presentation this is a nomogram uh, this is a uh, chart available like uh, more than 2 mg per liter at the time uh, within 4 hours or uh, 0.8 and 0.6 at the time 4 5 6 7 8 every hourly we obtain the plasma paraquet concentration after ingestion and if it is less than the uh, uh, prescribed values then the patient is likely to survive if it is more than the prescribed values at the duration certain duration then the patient is likely to end up in uh, death then uh, this is a summary of poor prognostic factors so the prognostic factors is mainly based upon the amount of ingested and the time of presentation determines the survival rate so there is a severity of paraquet uh, score uh, which is mainly based upon the 
amount of ingested and into blood plasma paraquat levels blood plasma paraquat levels and also there is if the patient present with hypotension low gcr severe hypoxia acidosis at the time of presentation then that indicates a very very poor prognostic factor usually the patient doesn't present with low gcs at the because of the paraquat poison if he presents with low gcs then suspect that patient has consumed uh, other than paraquat paraquat along with other poison then um, urine diethionate test more than uh, 1 mg a positive urine diethionate test and a pos uh, more than 2 mg in plasma paraquat levels at the time of presentation and if you obtain a ct chest if there are ground glass opacities of more than 50% and uh, increase in creatinine cystatin and lactate within 6 hours and if patient has uh, undergone acute kidney injury in within 24 hours all these predicts poor prognostic factors in patients uh treatment is mainly concentrated upon resuscitation gi contamination elimination and then supportive the main and main uh, important thing is never never give oxygen as we discussed in molecular mechanisms in presence of oxygen the paraquat is more rapidly forming the reactive oxygen species so when to give the oxygen oxygen is given only uh, unless and unless if the saturation is less than 88% or if PaO2 is less than 50 to 60 there are uh, no uh, predict uh, there is no prescribed guidelines that you should uh, start oxygen at this amount of saturation or at this amount of partial pressure of oxygen as per abg so when i refer to many uh, literatures available many of them have suggested that uh, saturation if it is less than 88% to 90 or if the partial pressure of oxygen in abg is less than 50 to 60 then you can start uh, uh, oxygen therapy and airway may be compromised in patients with the vomitus blood and uh, patient may be having um, a tachypnea or aspiration or acute alveolitis and um, if mild to moderate hypoxia should not be treated with oxygen remember this never and never give oxygen and circulation initially rapid uh, fluid management is required and uh, provided uh, you have to monitor input output chart of the patient usually the patient end up in non oliguric uh, acute kidney injury because um, in acute kidney injury usually a patient uh, ends up in oliguria but uh, always maintain a good amount of urine output in these patients and uh, gi decontamination uh, as this is a corrosive poison uh, many literatures have suggested that uh, gastric lavage is contraindicated but if patients presents within one hour gastric lavage can be tried with absorbents like activated charcoal 1 to 2 grams per kg filler cell 1 to 2 grams and bentonite 1 to 2 grams as a slurry and uh, early insertion of nasogastric tube is suggested because due to muc and the progressive days due to mucosal ulceration patients are unable to take uh, orally and so early insertion of a gastric uh, tube nasogastric tube helps in uh, providing nutrition to the patient and also protecting the inherent antioxidant property of that uh, tissue then let's think about the elimination enhancement uh, procedures the mainly three procedures available like uh, they have been tried in the patients by consuming paraquat plasma pheresis hemoperfusion and hemodialysis when we think about the plasma pheresis it is just removing the contents of the blood uh, after passing the blood uh, through a filter where it uh, separates uh, centrifugation filter where it separates the blood and plasma constituents so that um, in therapeutic plasma exchange the patient's blood is passed through a effervescent machine it is a separator machine where the blood and plasma is separated and the filtered plasma is removed and the reinfusion of rbc along with plasma albumin into the patient in double filtration process the patient's blood is passed through the uh, plasma uh, blood and plasma separation filter and after this plasma is passed into the secondary filter where large molecular and small molecular weight large molecular weight is usually the pathogenic substances are separated and the low molecular weight with albumin and the coagulation factors are again reinstituted into the patient um, so uh, what is the advantage of the plasma pheresis but plasma pheresis is usually indicated in a patient with uh, in, a, in poisons and toxics poisons where uh, low mo uh, high molecular weight and the lipophilic highly protein bound uh, and uh, as when i refer to the literature is mostly the 
people and others uh, the trials mainly concentrated on removing the uh, toxic substances like uh, because of the production of paraquat in uh, uh, reactive oxygen species and it produces pro inflammatory cytokines like il6 and tnf alpha plasma paralysis mainly uh, removes the il6 and tnf alpha because its molecular weight is around uh, 150000 and uh, the plasma paralysis is mainly uh, helpful in uh, taking out the large molecular weights of pathogenic substances and uh, when we see the paraquat its molecular weight is around 257 kilo daltons 257 kilo daltons and uh, it is highly lipophilic and due uh, within 1 to 2 hours mainly concentrated in the plasma so plasma paralysis can be tried if the patient's presence within 2 hours and if the patient's presence within 4 after 4 hours you can uh start with charcoal hemo perfusion because uh, with, uh, within 4 hours the patient's uh, plasma level starts reducing because of the rapid volume of distribution the paraquat gets uh, absorbed into the body's tissue and uh, with the remaining thing the mainly uh, in 12 to 24 hours is mainly excreted in uh, during uh, via the kidney so uh, we, if uh, when i searched the literature mainly the authors and trials have seen that within 2 hours the patient's presence many people have tried plasma paralysis and there, there is significant reduction of mortality and uh, but uh, there is no established uh, guidelines suggesting that you should start with plasma paralysis many guidelines and many established literatures many many literatures have proposed that within 4 hours if patients have uh, presented you have to start with charcoal hemo perfusion with uh, charcoal or resin cartridges or hemocol cartridges these are newly available cartridges that re- uh, removes the uh, paraquat uh, only few and few uh, established trials have been tried wherein plasma paralysis have been tried in reducing the significant mortality and uh, these are the journals uh, published in american journal of emergency medicine and also there is a stu- there was a study conducted in portugal where there was significant reduction of mortality where the people have been tried with seven sessions of uh, plasma paralysis and there was significant reduction of mortality Uh, usually the hemo perfusion to 8 hours courses of active charcoal hemo perfusion within 24 hours have been uh, proposed when we look into the graphs uh, graph clearly suggests that if the patient presents if the hemo perfusion is started within 2 uh, hours 2 to 4 hours if 2 to 4 hours a hemo perfusion has been started there is some significant uh, amount of uh, reduction of plasma paraquat um, a uh, concentration and if it has been started after 4 uh, hours there is no significant reduction of uh, there is no significant reduction of plasma paraquat levels so uh, if the patient presents uh, within 2 to 4 hours you can start with charcoal and he- uh, resin cartridges uh, hemo perfusions and after 2 to 4 after this uh, charcoal hemo perfusion if the patients are in uh, toxic drome syndromes Uh, because of the rapid production of uh, inflammatory cytokines you can also combine the double filtration plasma paralysis wherein you can remove the immunoglobulins and the cytokines so that the you can just prolong the survival of the patient but you cannot completely cure the patient uh, because of the paraquat consumption and uh, these are some of the immunosuppression therapy available because uh the rapid oxy- uh, rapid production of the inflammatory cytokines just to suppress all this uh, inflammatory cytokines and also with extra corporeal elimination of the inflammatory cytokines you can try the plasma paralysis and uh, immunosuppression therapy you can uh, try the pulse therapy wherein iv cyclophosphamide after hemo perfusion first after one cycle of hemo perfusion you can give cyclophosphamide in a dose of 15 mg per kg per day in 200 ml of 5d infused over 2 hours for two consecutive days and 1 gram of methyl prednisolone in 200 ml of 5d infused over 2 hours daily for three consecutive days so this is a pulse therapy given after initial pulse therapy administer dexamethasone every 6 hours until the partial pressure of oxygen is 80 mm if the patient's uh, partial pressure starts declining you can also repeat a uh, pulse therapy and if the previous pulse therapy has been given for 2 weeks since 2 weeks and if the wbc is greater than 3000 you can also repeat the pulse therapy again and then continue again dexamethasone and uh, people have tried uh, people have tried 
next uh, people have tried very much uh, people have tried high dose long term antioxidants could potentially be a critical component in improving the survival rate in severe paraquat poisoning so this is a uh, there but there are very much few established evidences that these antioxidants and immunosuppressive therapy is likely to improve the survival rate and uh, nac why is this nac given it is uh, helpful in uh, providing cysteine which is an important component in replenishing the glutathione reserves that is helpful in reducing the reactive oxygen species infusion of 150 mg per kg for 1 hour and 50 mg per kg for next 4 hours and 100 mg for next 4 days vitamin c vitamin e can also be tried and desferoxim uh, 100 mg per kg in 5 d can also be given only after the first hemoperfusion adaveron is anti apoptotic and anti inflammatory has also been tried in clinical trials and uh, this is a summary of management uh, pre hospital management uh, remember that paraquat when it comes in contact with the soil it rapidly gets deactivated so if you have found someone um, near your uh, neighborhood uh, consumption of paraquat you can immediately administer like uh, clean uh, non plastic clay uh, in a formation of slurry for me prepare in a formation of slurry and also you can administer it immediately so that it gets uh, decreased absorb it uh, can be tried to prevent the gi absorption gastric lavage if presented within 1 hour with activated charcoal fluorescent or bentonite clay and gentle management by iv fluids analgesia avoid oxygen until pao2 is 50 to 60 and there are some literature showing less than 40 antibiotics stress also provide palliative care in poor prognosis if the patient has consumed a lethal amount of dosage and emerging therapies with extra corporeal elimination uh, within one to within one hour of the patient presence you can try for plasma pheresis and then you can go for hemoperfusion to eight hours of session and uh, you can also combine hemoperfusion with the plasma pheresis and um, but uh, why seven sessions is removed because of the rapid volume of uh, distribution again and again after one cycle the uh, poison gets redistributed in the body and again and again it starts producing the inflammatory cytokines so and more and more amount of uh, multi organ dysfunction is encountered so we uh, do every alternative day seven sessions and uh, plasma pheresis combined with hemoperfusion or only plasma pheresis or only hemoperfusion so trials are being going on but uh, with the random clinical trials people have uh, tried in combination of plasma pheresis and hemoperfusion that significantly reduced the mortality if the patient uh, presence within less than 1 uh, hour you can try with the gi decontamination and taken up for plasma pheresis if it is uh, within 2 to 4 hours start with uh, charcoal hemoperfusion with resin or hemocol uh, cartridges Uh, those are the newly available cartridges uh, for removal of the paraquat poison and uh, also observe the complication for thrombocytopenia because of the more and more uh, heparin given during the charcoal hemoperfusion and hemodialysis is uh, and one more thing i forgot to say that hemodialysis is advocated only if the patient is going into the acute kidney injury or else you can just uh, finish it with hemoperfusion and plasma pheresis if patient is undergoing acute kidney injury then you can combine it with hemodialysis and uh, during the sessions observe the complication for hypokalemia dyselectrolemia hypocalcemia during plasma pheresis we give citrate and hypophosphatemia and um, preventing pulmonary damage and uh, with uh, uh, pulse therapy and uh, after pulse therapy you can start dexa it is on if the pulse ox- uh, the partial pressure of the um, oxygen is less than 60 again repeat the pulse therapy so uh, there are no established guidelines how to approach the paraquat poison as of now but uh, as far as i have studied the res- literature plasma pheresis is mainly indicated to uh, remove the toxic that are mostly highly protein bound and having high molecular weight and that has less volume of distribution but in paraquat the molecular weight is less and it is rapidly distributed and uh, but mainly plasma pheresis can it can be helpful in removing the inflammatory cytokines and uh, just prolonging the amount of survival so i would suggest after uh, referring the uh, amount of research available just start the hemoperfusion as soon as possible with resin hemocol cartridges and then 
uh, you can um, do with plasma pheresis to reduce the cytokines that have been produced and then again you can go with hemoperfusion and if patient ends up in acute kidney injury you can combine it with hemodialysis so that's about the paraquat poison and if you have uh, liked my lecture series do like and subscribe and share my channel and uh, do comment what lectures you want again from my channel thank you guys see you bye bye